With America distracted by two wars, perhaps with more to come, China is making a play to replace the U.S. as world hegemon. Last week, China hosted a summit attended by 130 countries, which is most of the countries in the world, that gave a place of honor to Vladimir Putin in a clear middle finger to the U.S. The summit was to celebrate the 10th anniversary of China's so-called Belt and Road Initiative, which is billed as a modern silk road that has so far plowed a trillion dollars of Chinese infrastructure investment into some 70 countries. These Chinese trillions serve two purposes. First, to make China's exports cheaper, since they can run through modern ports and trains that run on time, instead of the crumbling ports and railroads in third world countries like Kenya or Ohio. But there's a second purpose, to buy countries out of the U.S. orbit. As Larry Summers put it, when the U.S. comes visiting these countries, it brings a lecture, a list of demands about climate unions or LGBT policy. But when China comes, it brings a gigantic checkbook for goodies. Ports and trains, power plants, telecoms networks, roads, even apartment complexes. Essentially, China brings a menu. You can have a port and a phone system or a railroad hydro dam and three apartment complexes. Mix and match. Do you want an appetizer with it? So it is easy to see why countries might go with China. Of course, this also gives China control over these countries. Not only the power of the checkbook, but a lot of the new infrastructure is literally handed over to Chinese companies to run. For example, Greece sold a two-thirds stake in its largest port to a Chinese company who also owns 40 to 90 percent of major ports in Italy, Spain, and Belgium. The last is important because it competes with Rotterdam, which is Europe's largest port. So what is next? Brought to you by Unchained. What's next is while our ruling clowns in Washington and Brussels claim that losing wars makes us stronger, China knows it is running us down. It's depleting our weapons and munitions, it is scraping our bankrupt treasury, and it is driving inflation as federal spending ramps up to however many trillions it will take to stuff Americans into every conflict on Earth. Just last week, Republican senators were downright giddy how our twin wars will revitalize defense manufacturing. As in, Americans will not be making useful things like cars, but at least we can put our trillions to work blowing stuff up. Final point, China's push for global dominance is coming even as it hardens itself against the U.S. So China has been selling U.S. treasuries for a decade and is now accelerating the sales, whilst taking steps to insulate its real economy against the U.S. That includes cracking down on U.S. firms in China, even house-arresting U.S. executives. This pattern suggests that China is starting to think conflict with the U.S. is not only likely, but might actually be a good thing for them. So, while Joe Biden and Janet Yellen are out pushing their talking points that Americans can afford all the wars, our enemies know that we cannot. We've got a brand new podcast episode, fresh up on the internet. Check it out at the link. Okay, we'll be watching. See you next time.